Hi, Microbe Hunter here and this little critter, the name of this little critter is Cyclops. It is a freshwater crustacean, so it is related to the crabs. It's around a millimeter in size and in this video I'd like to show you um, how I caught it and how I put it under the microscope so that you are able to do the same thing. Those freshwater crustaceans, uh, what they do is, is they move around quite quickly as you can see and what they do is, is they quickly uh, snap back their antenna and their legs and this uh, makes them move forward very quickly. So they are a little bit difficult to observe under the microscope sometimes because they quick move away so quickly out of the field of view. But this here, this is the home of Cyclops um, and uh, this is a freshwater pond. Luckily um, the temperature is not so cold, uh, so the water has not frozen yet. Originally I wanted to collect some protozoans here, I have done so already before, um, because there were lots of decomposing leaves, so I thought this would be an ideal place uh, for paramecia and for other ciliates uh, to, to grow. And uh, during summertime uh, indeed this was the case, uh, but uh, when I took out a sample of water, um, I immediately poured it back again to swirl up uh, the ground sediment a little bit because I wanted to collect uh, some of the microorganisms that are also that have settled on the ground. And to my surprise, however, I found out that the water was surprisingly clear. And this is already a strong indica um, indicator that there are not so many suspended particles and not so many microorganisms in the water. And at home I found out why. Well, of course, because those little crustaceans, they have eaten up all of those microorganisms as a, as a food source. But then I said okay great <laughs> then I'm just gonna put the, those little the critters um, under the microscope and here here they are again. Now Cyclops is called Cyclops because it has only one eye. Maybe you can see the dark dot uh, on the head uh, of the little organism and Cyclops that is also the name of a mythological Greek monster which also only has one eye on the forehead. That's why they named it like that. Um, so what you have to do is, is you have to take a plastic pipette, a, a disposable one, and you have to cut off the tip of the pipette. And I'm going to just show you in a second. Yeah, here we go. Um, because the, the opening, the larger opening allows uh, more, more water to be taken up in a shorter amount of time. And this also does less harm to the, you know, to the little critters. But still it was uh, kind of difficult to catch them because they moved away so quickly. But with a little bit of patience I was able to get a few of them out. Um, into this little lid here um, and then I was able to retrieve again some of them to put them on a microscope slide. The microscope slide that I used um, was one that had indentations, indentations, okay now I got it right. Those they are concave microscope slides um, and I'm using them because um, I do not want the cover glass to crush um, the cyclops. Um, otherwise the water film would be too thin and this would of course inhibit their movement. That would be good but sometimes I've seen this, this could actually crush them and I did not want that either and I also wanted to observe the natural movement a little bit and here you can see that they're swimming around in there a little bit. I've also used a fairly large cover glass, not necessary but it's uh, possible. And here it is. Um, in case you're wondering about the nice uh, beautiful uh, background color, this is because I'm using polarized light and this kind of gives us this very attractive uh, coloring. Uh, the movement is a little bit inhibited because of the microscope slide, that is uh, quite good actually but uh, any higher magnifications than about 10 times uh, is probably also not suitable because uh, then they immediately move away from uh, the, the field of view. This one for example um, had some eggs um, attached to it and here um, on the tail of this, uh, of this uh, critter here you see some vorticella. Vorticella are ciliates uh, so these are kind of they're growing on the tail almost like parasites um, and uh, here you see them uh, see it again um, as well. I think uh, they are very nice uh, uh, little um, interesting organisms to observe. Now if you do not have access uh, to a pond then what I can recommend is, is that you order some brine shrimp eggs uh, from Amazon um, or from other shops and also some um, some uh, uh, triops, uh, they're called, uh, triops eggs. Now these are eggs that you can buy um, and you can hatch them at home. Usually these are activities that you can do with children. Um, but uh, what I'm going to do is I'm also going to buy some of those eggs and directly hatch them uh, and then we can also um, observe them under the microscope. But so in other words, if you do not have any ponds and water, uh, bodies of water around that serve as a source for these little animals, there are plenty of other ways uh, as well how you can grow them at home. So and last 
last uh, but not least I would like to invite you to subscribe uh, to a newsletter that I'm going to start to publish right now. Um, there is a link in the description and with this newsletter I would like to keep you, I would like to keep you updated um, of all of the videos uh, that I'm releasing so that you don't miss any and I might also add some additional videos uh, that are otherwise not visible um, to other people on YouTube. I would also like to thank, of course, uh, all of my supporters and patrons. Of course, I wish I wish you a yeah a happy micro hunting as always. Happy New Year, of course, and uh, see you around next time. Bye bye.